Whenever an app becomes popular, whether that be Vim, Ranger, NeoFetch, a GUI application, or even one of the standard utilities, things like, say, LS, clones will inevitably start to arise. And I don't just mean forks of the application, because you obviously see those as well. I mean things that take the existing code base and then re-implement that code base in some different way. Sometimes it's in a new language like, say, Rust, but other times it's going to be in the same language. It's just being remade from the ground up. And I know people like to meme about Rust rewrites. Rust isn't the focus for today, but it is certainly a common example. And I've even made a video talking about how you shouldn't go and bother other developers telling them to rewrite their application. But when it comes to writing something yourself, I think that rewriting applications like this honestly is what fuels the spirit of FOSS. And if we're going to be cloning applications or forking stuff and making very, very minor changes, I think we should be focusing at the application level rather than creating more and more distros that simply don't need to exist. I might do a dedicated video talking about the distro problem, but that's a topic for a whole nother day. So you know where I stand on this, but why do I have that opinion? One of the big reasons is when I first started programming, one of the things I really struggled with was finding a way to actually internalize the knowledge of the language I'm trying to learn. So things like, say, tutorials are really amazing tools for learning the basics of the language, learning things like what the language can be used for, learning the syntax, learning the structure. But until you actually start using that knowledge in some actual project, it's really only going to be in short-term memory, and you're not going to have that deep of an understanding of it. But I always struggled with finding project ideas that actually held my interest, because it's one thing to go and write a calculator, and another one, and another one, and another one, and another one, for every single new language that you learn. But that gets boring very, very quickly. So what you'd want to do instead is plan out some interesting project and then work on that. But I always sort of got bored at the planning stage, and in a lot of cases, didn't actually get to the actual programming part. But that can be very much alleviated by, instead of planning something yourself, looking at a product that is already complete, and then rebuilding that product from the ground up. Because in this case, sure, you probably should do a bit of planning, but you know what a complete version actually looks like. As a new developer, this allows you to get your feet wet with the language, but still have some direction on where you're actually taking the project. And unlike, say, having a university project where you might have no interest in what's actually being worked on, but you still have that direction. In this case, because you specifically picked the project knowing it's a project you already like, theoretically, working on that project, even building it from the ground up, should actually be fun. One great example of this is Core Utils by UUtils. Now, I know this project has been memed on tons and tons of times. Basically, this is a plain Rust rewrite of the GNU Core Utils. It's not adding anything special into it, it's just taking the original C code base and then rewriting it in Rust feature for feature, exactly the same. Obviously, with the benefits that come with writing in Rust along with the downsides. But a project like this, even though from an end user perspective, isn't very exciting. And no matter how much they can shill Rust to you, I don't think there's any reason why you should ever actually go and run this. But even so, a project like this gives you actual real-world experience working on a project that has a practical use case. It may not be a use case that anyone would actually use, but you know these tools are actually useful because you already are using their C variants, and I feel like this looks much better than just having some random throwaway project in your portfolio. But not every project is going to be a simple clone. Some of them out there are going to take the project as, I guess, an inspiration and go in a completely new direction. One great example of this is my terminal file manager, LF, which if you've ever looked at the Ranger file manager, you will realize this is very, very heavily inspired by that project. Now, the developer fully acknowledges the inspiration, but if you look at the implementation between the two projects, it's entirely different. So LF, I believe, is written in Go, Ranger is in Python, but it's not just like a clone of Ranger. The way it actually handles the file manager is completely different as well. So when you download Ranger, it comes with this really big configuration that does everything that you probably want from a file manager. LF, on the other hand, basically says, nah, 
go and write it yourself. And that's what I've had to do. I've gone and configured everything that I want in the file manager without having to worry about any of the defaults that would have existed there with something like Ranger. Or how about my ls commands? So what you're seeing right here isn't actually the GNU version of ls. This is another application called exa. Now at a base level, it does the same general thing as ls. It lists out your files, but it also adds some extra things like icons and coloring, and it strips out a lot of the options options that LS has that the developer doesn't really think are that useful, and some options that LS has as just options are the defaults in EXA. And I could spend all day talking about speed focus rewrites of SED and ORC and GREP and FIND, and with things like FIND, a speed focus rewrite can actually have a lot of value because that application searches for files on your file system and it's not as optimized as it could be. So if you try to do a find from, say, your home directory, there is a lot of speed improvements that could be made there and absolutely are made with applications like FD. And I don't think these applications will ever replace the base version, but I just don't really think that's the actual point. And the developers make this very clear on their GitHubs most of the time as well. A lot of the time, these applications will be missing options that existed in the base version, making certain sort of workflows simply impossible with the rewrite, but the developer just didn't really see that as being actually important. So if you need that specific option, obviously go and use the base version. But the nice thing about having all of these clones and all of these rewrites that have extra features is it gives you options. If you say want icons and coloring in your LS because it's gonna make it easier to distinguish what the different files and folders actually are, this gives you an option to actually do that. If you want a faster version of find and you're willing to sacrifice some options that you won't use anyway, this gives you an option to do that. If you want a terminal file manager that lets you configure everything that you want, this gives you the option to do that. But they're not going to be the tools for everyone. Even in cases where the rewrite is just objectively better. Let's say it is 100% compatible with the interface of the base application, produces the exact same results, but does so 10 times faster. Let's say you have a perfect rewrite of find, for example. Even in cases like that, it might not be a better application for your workflow, even if the application itself is objectively better. Let's say you SSH into other people's servers, and you can't just go and install random applications on that server. Even if the application is better, you still can't access it, and it makes it worse for you. So even though people may make fun of your project and say, this project is a waste of time, it has no use case, I fully encourage new developers, old developers, people who want to get into development to go and rewrite their favorite applications in whatever language they're trying to learn. And if you decide at some point that you don't just want it to be a basic rewrite, you instead want to go take that project and then take it in some new direction that for your workflow might make a lot of sense, but maybe for others, it doesn't. In that case, please go and do so because having more developers out there is always going to be a good thing. Maybe at some point you'll decide, okay, I've learned enough this language. I'm then going to shift on to some other project. Let's say you're learning C and then you decide, okay, I feel like I'm comfortable enough with C now. I'm going to go maybe submit some patches to the Linux kernel. I think that encouraging developers to actually learn new languages is always going to be a good thing. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. That's going to be everything for me. And before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Donald, Logan, Michael, Andre, Mitchell, Nathan, David, Carl, Will, Brennan, Chica Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Josh, Michael, Pithy, Stephen, Tease, Through, Tony, Shushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go on support work, there will links down below to my Patreon, Subscribe, Star, Leave, Rail, that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays, where I live stream twice a week, and this channel is available over on Odyssey. That is everything for me, and I'm out. I'm trying to change up the outro, and I can't work out exactly what I want to do.